for Finnish. So, okay, uh, I'm Jan from Internet Society, and I would like to talk about um, our Net64 experiment in Go6 Lab. So, um, before I joined ISOC, um, I founded the Go6 Institute in Slovenia. That's not for profit organization for deployment of IPv6 for awareness, for raising the awareness about IPv6. And I'm still the CEO of that of that company because I didn't find anyone to, I didn't find any any successor. And we still run a Go6 lab. That's you will see a picture in a minute. And as I mentioned yesterday, I usually go around the world, talk to operators, and try to figure out what are the the problems that they are facing. And Net64 was one of one of common things that I heard from, from operators talking about. So, um, okay, first the problem statement. Uh, let me walk you through all the six degrees of my inner turbulence with this stuff. Um, IPv6 and IPv4 are incompatible on the wire. They just don't talk to each other. If you have IPv6 host and you have IPv4 host, they would not talk to each other, right? So we need some sort of a translation mechanisms between these two um, uh, protocols. So, as mobile operators are massively switching to IPv6 only, for example, if you just have a look at the T-Mobile USA, they have, as we speak, over 52 million IPv6 only devices, Android phones, on their network, and they are IPv6 only. If these devices want to reach IPv4 internet and content, they will go through Net64 translation. And I'm talking just about one mobile operator. There are several. There is Verizon, there are, there are mobile operators in Europe that are switching over to IPv6 just because Android, Android rolled out um, 464X LED that makes it easy. And that means we are getting more and more and more IPv6 only clients. So, what are the important questions here? If you, a content provider, you would have to ask yourself a question, how would all these people see my content? Because if, if I'm putting content on, on the internet, I want as many people as possible to reach my, my, my content, right? And if I'm mobile operator and switching over to IPv6 only, I want to know if I will break the, 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 the end user experience and I want to have a tool that I can check how certain content would be seen from it. Um, okay, first we implemented in Go6 Lab four different uh, Net64 uh, servers. Let me talk about this first. Okay, no, credits first. Let, let's get this out, out of the way. Uh, I would like to thank Internet Society for dedicating my time in the lab, my working time that I, I, can, I can play with these things and experiment with these things. I would also like to thank the Go6 Institute for funding and running Go6 Lab where I can, I can play. Uh, SHM Stefan, that's Sander Stefan's company. He is the, he, Sander and I did the, 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 the Net64 check together and he did all the coding and everything. And Kareem Pritchard, Sanders' girlfriend, for the lovely uh, design for the for the user interface. So, thank you and hug. Um, okay, first of all, Go6 Lab uh, Net64 test bed. Um, we have four different implementations. So, for 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 example, I I, I received an email from Lorenzo from Google, saying, Jan, thank you for running all these different implementations in your Go6 Lab. While we were building 464XLAT code for Android, we actually tested remotely from Japan all three, all four different versions, and one of them behaved weirdly, so we found a bug and fixed the bug in our code. So if you're an operator, if you're a content provider, whatever, it's quite easy to remote test the Net64. How, how, how it is done? Uh, here are the instructions. Where is the laser? Laser. Here. If you go here, you will, you will find the very simple ins instructions that looks like, like this. So the, here is the explanation of how the, the whole thing 
works. And it says to test different NetSync or setups, you need to disable IPv4 on your device and set an IPv6 resolving DNS server, different one for each setup. And here you have, so if you set on your, on your laptop, if you set this IPv6 address as your resolver, it will start, it will start building the, 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 the code A's for you for IPv4 only content and then send your traffic through A10 networks Net64 that is sitting in Slovenia in Go6 Lab. If you put this one, it will send you through Palo Alto Networks Firewall that is sitting in, in the lab. If you put this one, YOL, that's an open source um, implementation um, module for Linux. And if you do this one, yeah, Cisco shipped us ASR 1K that is sitting in our lab doing NET64 um, uh, translation. So you, you have all four of them, test them, send packets through, it's open, it's free, and you decide which one, which one you like the most. These are pictures. Um, Sander calls it a systematic chaos. That's a Go6 lab. Um, these, are, these are the machines that are parallel to machines that are taking care of the, of the translations. That's, that's the box. So this is a real hardware. This is not something in the cloud. This is, this is a real hardware that is, that is doing the work and it's available for you to test. Okay, so once, once we set this up, and then people started using it. And then from time to time, I go into the log files and I, I monitor what's going on in, in the system, right? And you can, you can see what can possibly go wrong just with, with using it and testing it. Because then you see that people is doing weird stuff, right? There is the enemy inside of every one of us. And people, people is doing weird stuff on the internet. For example, have you ever seen these values of quad A records? People put in a record of column, column. Well done. This is not going anywhere. This is really, really not going anywhere. People, people put in the value of column, column one. This is your local inter, this is your loopback. This is, Dude, it will show you your own web page if you're running a web server on your machine. What's wrong with you? Then people put in column, column, FFF, column, and IPv4 address. That also is not going anywhere. Then we have FE80. That's a link local address. If you put the quad A with, with, with your link local address and, and, and put it into your DNS zone, you're not doing yourself a favor. And some other value. Well, look, this one. That's a documentation prefix. And please explain to me that you were not doing copy-paste. Right. You did it. If you have seen something like this and you know who did it, please talk to him and tell him that he should start using some tobacco in what he smokes. Really. Seriously. <laughs> right? There is more stats here courtesy of, of, of Dan Wing. Um, he, is, he is actively searching for this stuff and, and putting lists out who, who is doing this stuff. But the problem with this is that if you do something like this and you try, and you try to go through NAT64 environment, you will not see this content because it will break. If you, if you have dual stack environment, then IPv6 stack will give up after a couple of minutes of inactivity or if you, if you have happy eyeballs, it will just work because IPv4 will, will bring you content. But with NET6 war, you have IPv6 only on your machine and you rely on it. And then how DNS64 works, if there is no quad A record, it will synthesize you one. But in this case, there is a quad A record. So DNS64 will not synthesize the NET64 quad A record. Therefore, things will completely break because all you have is just, for example, column, column one as the website address. And of course, operators are not very happy if these things happen because when people encounter this, people will start calling help desks, right? People start calling help desk and that is costly for the operators. So, few, 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 few examples. First inside.com, you see, 
it's an alias for, for this site and, and it's IPv4 only. If you go without www, has IP address of column column. Not good. People fix it. So, when you're deploying things, you need fixes. So what can we do about it? Right, we can talk to people and say, please go and fix your stuff. But you can't talk to everybody in, in the world, and there is no tobacco everywhere, right? And you need to remember, if you are, if you are not part of solution, you are part of a problem. So what we figured out is that um, IANA assigned just one slash three block of IPv6 addresses that are currently in use as a global uh, unicast addresses. And we figured out that if there is a quad A record that is pointing to anything outside this, it's most probably bogus and, in, and invalid. So there is a way how to do things. Bind, who is using bind as a resolver? Okay, cool. Here is your config file. You know, I've been known in this industry that none of my presentations can go through without at least some config files examples. So here is the first one. If you do this, this is the DNS 64, this is the NET64 prefix that you, you, you use to, to route your traffic to the NET64 box. And what you do is, you just exclude everything from zero up to 2000 colon colon slash three, and the rest of the IP space, plus documentation prefix that is inside this space. What does this mean? This means that um, if the DNS64 server gets the quad A, that is anything outside the global unicast address space, it will just ignore it and create the quad A record with the NET64 prefix and the content will automatically show to your customer. So you will not break the end user customer experience. Um, of course, we will talk about this later. There is break DNS sec, yes. Um, that's all of part of stream of consciousness that you need to put in. This is a hack, but it, it's a hack that works. And until everybody in the world will fix their, their quad A records, and until people will use NAT64, we will have to use these, these hacks. Okay, there is a moment of betrayal, DNSSEC. I'm a big proponent of DNSSEC. I like it, I use it, I, I talk about DNSSEC all the time. But in this case, you need to, sec, you, you need to set break DNSSEC yes configuration directive. Why? Because when you synthesize quad A records, that means if I go for, I don't know, www.yarn.si, uh, and that if that one would be IPv4 only, DNS64 server would create a quad A record. And if that zone is signed, is DNSSEC signed, I don't have a way how to sign that quad A record that I just created because I don't have a private key that was, that I don't have a key that was used to sign this zone. That means I have to set the break DNS record uh, check on. Um, how, this, how this actually works, um, if you, if you dig quad A record for 4.go6.si, that, re, that should return the quad A record with, with NET64 prefix. Um, you, will get, you will not get anything without break DNSSEC yes, and that's an Enigma machine. That's a complete Enigma machine. Um, if you put in break DNSSEC yes, then you see, you, you would get back the NET64 prefix plus IPv4 address in, in a hex format. So this is something you need to do if, 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 if you want to use this. Um, unbound, because mostly we use unbound. This is the configuration. Uh, this is how you configure the, 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 the server with the NS64. And then you go like private addresses are these ones. So that means there will be 
excluded and ignored if, if received. If you want to understand more how DNSSEC and uh, DNS64 together works, there is an excellent RFC uh, written by a couple of our friends. Um, it's RFC 6147, and here it's explained how to, how to, how to get around uh, things. Right. So, a couple of examples. Firewalls.com. Still waiting for the time, and that's, Net6, that's a Net64 um, uh, page. Indeed, it's very secure. It's running on this IP address. <laughs> it will not work. Just not. Okay. Um, Spain people. Uh, I've been told that this was fixed by, by Jordi, but, but still. Uh, you see, Net64 and IPv6, it's something completely, completely different. Good DNS and, and bad server. This response on IPv6 somewhere completely else. Um, Schrani.si, this is from Slovenia. I, I had to put something from my own country on, on, on the shame list. That is a sort, sort of like an online storage tool. And here it says um, that you, you cannot put files on here because you are not in Slovenia. So geolocation tool on IPv6 was broken. I was sitting inside Slovenia. I was sitting inside my lab that is decidedly and definitely in Slovenia. So what do you want? Um, but yeah, they, they decided I'm not from Slovenia because I came over IPv6 address and that was, that was it. Um, UC.CN, that's what you see over IPv4. That's what you see over NET64. Nobody knows, but okay. It's a little bit confusing. Then we have uh, these people from Germany. They're, they are trying to sell stuff. But if you sell stuff like this, nobody will buy it. Nobody will click on it. There are no pictures. Huh? Yeah. The Sorry? The, the Slovenian yeah. Yeah. Yes, but the tool, the the um, geolocation was working on IPv4. Geolocation didn't work on IPv6 because I was accessing it over IPv6. It thought that that I was outside Slovenia. It didn't recognize the IPv6 addresses. So yeah, with this one, if you want to sell stuff, you want to make sure that people see what you what what you're selling. Otherwise you will not sell much, and you will close the website, and that's probably a, even a good idea, I don't know. Um, good server, bad content. So, you see, this, these are, are all the differences that shouldn't, shouldn't be happening. Uh, then we, we found the, the, some people, they are hold the household church, and what they did was they put in a quad A record that is pointing to this address that looks valid, and the server is responding to pings, but web server is not listening on IPv6. This will not, this will also not, not work because Net64 machine will not do the, the, the translation. It, it will just, people will reach to you over v6 and then they will get nothing, right? Then we have uh, working quad A record and IPv4 only content. So as, as, uh, uh, as you see here, um, you see you have a bad gateway, so people on IPv6 only will not see much. People from over Net64 will see something. And you know, then if you, if, you, if you click here, you can go inside the tool. Now I'm already showing you the tool that I want to talk to you later. If you, if you click here, you can get in, into into all the all the um, uh, these um, how are they they call the elements of the page that that were loaded over different um, um, protocols. So you you can see exactly where your your content broke. Okay, so how to test these things? We found many many cases where things were broken. 
And that's how Sander and I, over a couple of beers somewhere, decided that it's time to build a tool that we could test all these things. And it's called Net64 Check. Um, and it does test on Net64, test on IPv6 only, did all the resources, script load OK, does it look good to the user, do we see any patent UD issues? And that's, that's the version one that it does. And that's the tool that's caught in the web. And you can go and, and check your websites now if you want, if you can listen to me and type in your computer at the same time. I know I can't, but some of you may. Uh, it's net64check.go6lab.si. Um, you will go there, you will see this, um, front page and in here if you type in the URL whichever you have and press check it will go and do, do the test. Um, you can also then do the, the um, what is this the, the, the filtering and the sorting and, and all this stuff so here then you have you have the measurements that were done on this tool previously. Currently, we are running this tool from November last year. I think I spoke for the first time in Afrinik in Mauritius about this. And from November to today, we have over 160,000 measurements where people, <laughs> uh, Megan is overly optimistic here. Um, there is over 160,000 measurements where people typed in their, email, their URL and actually saw the, the test. So it, it's quite he heavily used. All right. I will be quick. Um, what you can do is then you get the result that shows you on this side it's IPv6 only. So this is where how your content is seen from IPv6 only environment. This is how, how it's seen from IPv4 only and this is how it's seen from Net64. And now if you do the mouse over here it will show you the, the, it will show you the difference, you see? It will show you what is the difference. Um, and then you can go and see what, what, what actually broke um, um, with, with your thing. Important, we don't fix brokenness here. We don't exclude the bogus quadi records. Uh, we don't fix anything for you. This is how a real user from the internet would see without all these workarounds. And all IPv6 connectivity from all three machines is on path MTU limited um, uh, link. It's limited to 1280 to simulate the the tunnel. So if if path MTU breaks between my lab and your server, then it will break. Just working IPv6 connectivity will not help you in this case. You need to have it working properly. Otherwise, it will break. Um, and yeah, we, we have two instances. One is net64check.go6lab.si, and that's running in my lab. And one is net64check.ipv6-lab.net. That's in, in Netherlands, in, uh, in Sanders' lab. Um, so, the illumination theory be, uh, below the bonnet, how, how this thing works. Um, we have a management server and web interface, that's, a, that's its own server. And then we have server with only IPv4, server with only IPv6, server with Net64. These are three servers that the management server is talking to. You ask the management server to do the test and this guy sends the, the, the commands to all these three environments and they go and use Phantom GS here. They use Phantom GS to fetch the content, render the, the picture, and then report back which elements loaded, and here is the picture how we can see the content. And then the management server compares um, the whole the whole thing. And some images and, and and words. This is the master end web interface. This is IPv4 only client. This is IPv6 only client that is connected to different environments. And this is Net64, DNS64 uh, web client that shows you um, how your, your content is being seen from the world. Um, as I already mentioned, enter the, the name or URL that would, you would like to test. The process will, will start all needing browsers to test. And please take the time. Take the time. This is 
quite a complex process running behind. It will send the command. Sometimes uh, the, some, some elements of the page may need to time out so the, 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 the browser can report the picture, things like this. Don't, don't frantically press this button, uh, it's not showing anything. It will show you, you just need to take some time. Um, it will show you so, so, sort of like this, it's test in progress and you just wait, have a cup of coffee or, or I don't know, read some news and it, it, it will come back to you. Um, wash, rinse and repeat. Um, if you see that your content is broken, then you need to fix it, of course. Um, test your website, um, ask yourself all these, all these questions. Did you hard code any IPv4 addresses in your HTML code? Um, in this case, DNS 6.4 will fail. Um, you know, ask yourself first why, why I don't have IPv6 on, on, on my server anyway, because most of the things fails with people without IPv6. Um, fix and test again and repeat until all three pictures are the same, until you, you hit 100%. Remember, if you're fixing a DNS, and Mark can tell you about DNS, um, DNS have TTL. It will, it will take time until your change in DNS propagates to our servers, so come back probably on the next day or, or, or something and test again. Uh, when we're talking about DNS, for, for example, you can get away with, with semi-working uh, 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 DNS zone in IPv4 with, with NET64 check, with, with NET64 not so much. For example, this one, um, qq.com, uh, they put in uh, some the SOA that's not subdomain of their own QQ zone, so they, they misconfigured the whole thing. And of course, it, it, it didn't work. So having a fully working DNS zone on the internet is also um, very important. Um, Net64 check code is available on GitHub. It's free. Um, you can have a look at it. We are also looking for, for the good developers that would like to, to, to be part of a team. Um, we are just now um, figuring out how to rewrite the Net64 check for version 2 that will consist out of three tires. Uh, First tire would be in Sanders and my lab, and that would be the central machine. And then we will ask people around the world to implement instances around the world. And the central machines would then be able not just to compare the three images, but the, to compare how your content is visible from different parts of the world. And that would be even, even cooler. We also have a long list of suggestions from the community what to improve. And we will, we will put all that stuff in, in version 2, but it will take some time because lots of code needs to be rewritten. And it's, uh, um, we are building now a team that, 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 that will do that. And if you, are, if you are a Python coder and you would like to uh, volunteer and participate in, in this thing, more than welcome, talk to Sander. Um, okay. As we say, the spirit carries on. There is version two coming out. Uh, if you're a content provider, test how people see your content. If you're a network provider, if you're a connectivity provider, test how your IPv6 only clients will see the content. If you are, if you are both, well, all of the above. And with this, you might be surprised. Well, you probably will be surprised. And I think it's time for questions, or we don't have time for questions. One. One question. Yes, please come to the mic. Hi, my name is Alan Levine. Um, I've um, had success with the front page on IPv6, but as soon as you submit a form, then you're going into a back-end process which sometimes breaks when you're using IPv6 on a website which is theoretically works on IPv6 but has a broken back-end. Did you, did you check it through this tool? Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, I only found out about this tool after it was fixed. Ah, okay. 
Well, but uh, have you? I mean, have you had experience with forms and the way that the form gets submitted off the site? We don't uh, go into that much detail because we we use Phantom JS as a command line browser that fetches the content, and then we do the simple comparison. We don't go in, in into details. We show you the, the the raw format of what each of these environments actually got, and then you need to fix it out to figure it out. Uh, which one broke and and which one you need you need to fix, but we 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 will build more intelligence into into version two, uh, but I'm not sure we will go in that in that depth. We we will probably m more um, visibly emphasize your issues, but not not go into 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 the form details. Yeah. It's just something to keep in mind. Right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So this is a really good system to avoid systematic chaos. Yes. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so did did anyone do the tests while you're here? And what's the result? Hundred hundred? Wow, well done. Any uh, anybody else is using the tool? Okay. Well, Use it. It's there. It's free. It's, it's made for you. Thank you very much.